Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, allow me to start the video by saying thank you so much to all of you for being here with us, and hopefully you'll always learn something new while you're here. So anyway, I'd like to continue sharing with all of you what the exorcist Father Joseph Iannuzzi said in his podcasts. I'll just say this for a start. I find this priest, Father Iannuzzi, particularly brilliant, and the more I listen to his podcasts, the more I wanted to hear him talk. For the past few days, I've been doing what I like to call my homework, and I just continue listening and learning. And so for this video, there are two things that I'd like to share with you. I promise you by the end of this video, you'll learn something new, at least I hope so. The first part is about the Inquisition and exorcism, and the second part is the consecration of Russia. So now buckle up and let's get right on it then. And I also spoke of how exorcisms that were celebrated in Latin up until the 12th century came to a halt. And this was the, the, about the um, fifth period in the church, in the history of exorcisms. So I put out a work entitled, A Brief History on Exorcisms, Exorcisms, Possessions, and Deliverance. This was put out in 2016. And it's a small reading. You can read it in about, I don't know, half an hour. It's about 47 pages. And the uh, fifth period of the church, I break down this, the progression of exorcisms and the digression thereof in seven stages or periods. And in the fifth period of the church that spans from the 12th to the 15th century, the church lost its footing in its combat against Satan through exorcisms. And it was a period in which Europe was plagued with wars and disease. And there was the Hundred Years' Wars, where women who were found a bit crazy were labeled as witches. And this is especially prevalent, was prevalent in Protestant circles for a while. We recall the Salem, Massachusetts event. And the very women that needed more than anyone else to be exorcised were instead persecuted and burned to the stake. So exorcism stopped in the church in exchange for a false substitute from the church of inquisitions and witch burnings. Joan, Saint Joan of Arc, is a prime example. Although she would later be declared a saint, not a martyr, I wonder why, hmm, who killed her? She was during the inquisition and for political reasons accused of being a witch, and she was never exorcised to prove her innocence or guilt, to determine whether the voices she was hearing were coming from God or Satan, but dealt the common practice of the day of the Inquisition, she was burned to the stake. And for the next audio clip is something that really gives a clearer understanding in regards to the consecration of Russia. Now, as you know, there are links to the full videos for every audio clip I'm sharing with you on this channel, so please check them out later on. I'll share with you at Medjugorje. What did Our Lady say at Medjugorje? Do you know that Medjug Our Lady at Medjugorje spoke about Russia? Yeah, she did. In 1981. She said, the Russian people, this is the Virgin Mary of Medjugorje in 1981. She says, the Russian people will come to glorify God the most. The West has made civilization progress, but acts as if they are their own creator, unquote. Let me repeat that quote to you from the Blessed Virgin Mary of Medjugorje in 1981. The Russian people will come to glorify God the most. The West has made civilization progress, but acts as if they are their own man, their own creator. Okay, now back to the comparison of the West and the East. In Western Europe, at least 28 cathedrals were sold and are still being sold to become casinos, hotels, cafeterias, and mountain resort for alpinists. This, in my opinion, is like the abomination of the desecration. Taking something that's sacred and you're making it profane. The churches in the West are getting emptier by the year. And all Western countries, including America, and many Christians have apostatized. Many priests who are falling, failing Jesus, and monasteries and convents are emptying. Now, this doesn't apply to every monastery, every convent. Some are in increase, but I'm talking in general. 
the vocations are declining in the East and the West, and they're actually increasing in the East. Governments in the West are extinguishing the little life, light left of Christianity in public schools, prohibiting prayer, and in public places, you can do at sports events prayers, that prohibit the catechism in certain public schools under the pretext that there are other religions in the classrooms and they will be offended. The Western world leaders have openly supported a, in quotes, new world order. The European Union, which is West, allows gay marriages even in churches. And the present day US administration is encouraging this as well. In 2015, the US Supreme Court declared same-sex marriage legal. Transgenderism, critical race theory, have been introduced in Western public schools across the US, and these eviscerate faith-based faith -based Christian mores. Immorality has spread in the Western world, losing all the human and spiritual values previous generations have labored to establish. Abortions are in demand and enforced in the West by law. However, in Russia, as we speak, hundreds of new churches are being built out of necessity. And the ones now used are filled in many cases with believers, certainly, but I'm talking in general, many are filled. You go to the countries, they're overflowing. In some of the cities, they're not so packed because in the city, you tend to have more of the urbanized, um, way of life and more secular and um, business oriented um, approach to um, religion than in the country. Now, in the Russian churches, their monasteries are growing with new novices. The government in Russia does not deny Christ, but speaks openly and encourages schools to keep their Christianity. And you know what the Russian government teaches? at schools, at public schools, Christianity in the catechism. America doesn't do that. The government together with the church in Russia declare openly that they will not be part of the European Union and the New World Order because the EU has lost its moral values and their Christianity as they had in the past under the Soviet Union. So even Putin in a public I'm not here again. I'm not playing politics. I don't know who Putin is. I don't know if he's good or bad. I know more, know more about Putin than I know, know, know about Biden. I know no more about Putin's private personal life and morality and Christian faith than I know about Biden's morality and private life and Christian, Christian faith. So I'm not going to talk about them, but what I do know is that he rehabilitated the Christian church just a few months ago. He went there, I saw the video and they, they interviewed it on the news. He interviewed the whole situation. It was about to foreclose and he opened it up and he invested money from the government to rebuild his Christian church. He um, was against the whole idea of the European Union trying to force the Vatican out of a seat of representation there. The EU and the United Nations as well. They want to get the Vatican out of there. They believe they no longer need a Christian presence. Now, um, it has been declared on the part of the Russian leaders that they de declare that no one will tear us away from our faith and we will defend our Christian faith. It's Orthodox, of course, it's not Catholic, but it's still Christian. We will defend our faith until death. The, the Russian government has openly denounced the new world order. I want to be clear on this because I've seen several false articles saying Russia wants to create a new world order. This is completely false. You won't find him saying that. You'll find him saying the opposite. It's in public, condemned it, and the EU wants to promote a new world order. Russia's declared the agenda promoting that um, agenda promoting gays are not welcomed and not allowed to make processions nor gay marriages in Russia. Russia's declared that any foreigner who wants to live in Russia must be asked, one, to learn Russian, two, to become a Christian and follow their traditions. And if not, they are not welcomed. And now Russia is predominantly Orthodox Christian and they have all, all seven sacraments like the Catholics do. And um, 
they allow Christians to openly express and practice their faith. There are in Moscow several Catholic and Anglican churches that they allow to flourish as well. Well, that's all for this video. Again, please take some time to check out the Divine Will channel and you can listen to more of Father Yanuzi. Before I end this video, let me share one final clip here where Dr. James share what he thought of Father Yanuzi. So, like most people, I did a little Google search and just looking at the results and what you can read, I said, oh, this is off the charts. This is crazy stuff. This is heretical because site after site was just trashing this doctrine. And then right before I was about to exit out, I saw STD. Now I know what that means because I'm an academic and I'm familiar with uh, theological circles and, and teachings. And uh, it doesn't mean a type of disease. It means doctorate of sacred theology. That's a pontifical degree, a pontifical degree. And I said, wait a minute, someone with a pontifical doctorate is behind this movement? and all these sites are trashing it? I said, that doesn't make any sense in the world. It doesn't make any sense in the world. Then I found out it was actually approved with magisterial seals of approval, this academic's work, and people are trashing him. I said, how on earth are these Catholic bloggers and websites with no credentials, no qualifications, attacking a mystical theologian of the church from a pontifical university. I said, that makes absolutely no sense. So I went right to the dissertation, and that's very unusual. Most people, they go to a retreat, they hear a talk, but I went right to the dissertation. And, you know, chapter one, I skimmed through because, you know, dissertations aren't written like novels, they're a certain format. But when I got to chapter two, and I read chapter two, it was like reading, it was like a Mozart symphony. All these theological pieces that I've contemplated and reflected on for years and years and years and talked about, all these scattered pieces were suddenly pulled together. And I could see a clear truth surfacing. And this clear truth was surfacing. And I said, oh my God. That's how it all goes together. And this is all, and it just was shoom. It was breathtaking. It was absolutely breathtaking. Again, thank you so much for being here, and hopefully you've learned a lot from this session today. For those of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation down in the description box below. We are doing this full time, and it's truly a humbling journey, putting all of these together for all of you. Until the next video, Stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.